Good morning นะครับ everyone On the last class we talk about um, the logic นะครับ the logic in term of what we call the um, nested if oh, sorry the basic if and nested if นะครับ so whenever we would like to make a decision in Microsoft Excel normally we use like a um, couple of functions in order to help us for making decision นะครับ these functions are if and or and not นะครับ um, the four major functions that we use for decision making and whenever we talk about the if we have two different types of if that you have to know the first one นะครับ we call it as basic if for the basic if, why do we call it as basic if? Because whenever we have the um, decision making, the decision making is not complicated. We have just like um, like the basic one logical test only in order to um, calculate or to justify um, the value that we would like to go. Whenever we talk about the, um, the if function normally, let's see. I show the um, function formula once again. I have the syntax of the if function. Um, doesn't matter whether it's basic if or nested if, we use the same function that is if function. Um, you can see that for the standard syntax of if function, it is if followed by logical test. And then we have value if true and value if false. Um, talking about each part of the um, argument of the uh, if, the first argument, logical test, is like the comparison in order to just like let if to decide the um, true or false state of um, this logical value or logical test. So um, what does it mean by logical test in here? It means that if you would like to compare value in a cell to the value of another cell or if you would like to compare the value of one cell with a specific value or you can just like compare text with another text you compare text in the cell with um, the text in another cell these are the comparison and when you compare how to compare normally the if function in the part of the logical test we use um, the sign, sorry, the symbol have, that are equals. Have, okay, okay, let me just like write it down that, okay, we use these, these symbols have. for equals, have, the equality, we use equal sign. Have, greater than, have, less than, greater than or equals to, we use this symbol, have, we use this symbol. For less, um, sorry, for less than or equals to in the same way around. Uh -huh. um, and when we say that, okay, we would like to compare um, inequality, uh -huh. we just use this one, uh -huh. less than and um, greater than symbol together like this. These are the um, symbol that we have to use uh -huh, for comparison in the logical test. When you would like to test the value, for example, if you would like to compare C65 is greater than sorry, is greater than three. We just like um, write like this. Um, A90 is not equal to hello. Something like this. These are the comparison. When you compare like this, you know just like how do gonna how do we gonna just like formulate the expression for comparison already. The next two other um the next two more arguments that you have to know are value if true and value if false. Um, for value if true and value if false, it means that what would you like that cell that you put that you place the if function in to do, for example. Um, the value if true might be a calculation. Uh, um, a value if true might be assigning a value to that cell. Uh, a value might be just like having some more calculation as well. Uh, in that case, it will become the nested if instead. 
นะครับ same as value is false ครับ when would uh, when you say that okay after testing for the logical test you get um, value is true what are you going to do and um, if it's not true what are you going to do bear in mind that for the logical test when you compare there are two possible answer only นะครับ either true or false It will not. Um, it will never be the maybe ones. If you say that maybe, then you cannot use if function. Okay. Or in case that you said that if in the case of maybe you would like to do something instead, then you may have to just like um, um, what to say, prepare, and analyze a logical test, to be more elaborate to um, your um, testing, for that logic. All right. So. And after that, on the last class, I talk about the tools that we may be able to use to make your e function to work easily. I talk about the um, flowchart, if you remember. Okay, here, let's see. Just show you that. Just let me open up the computer. Okay, in the last class, I talk about the example of the uh, tools that we use in order to help the calculation uh -huh, or the um, basic if and nested if to work easily. Um, I introduce a tool that is called as flowchart, uh -huh, and this is um, the flowchart um, symbols that we use to draw the flowchart. Uh -huh. So we have the um, rounded corner um, rectangle that is start stop. Uh -huh. The parallelogram we use for input, diamond shape for decision, uh -huh. process and calculate. We use the basic rectangle, uh -huh. pencil shape we use to represent display, circle is for on page connector, uh -huh. um, pentagon used for off page connector, and then we have the arrows for the flow of data. So on the last class, when we talk about the first example, um, that example I talk about the what to say um, the way in order to calculate for the um, sorry let me just like check this one just one bit on. I talk about the student score I have with the grade S or U. We said that in this example. In this example, if the student score is from 60 and above, we give S grade. Otherwise, we give you uh, we give you grade. So assume that uh, firstly you have to know first when you have to just conduct the logical test, where uh, I mean if you say that you want to compare the value in one cell uh, with a specific value, this one you want to compare the value that you store student score with the value 60. So that means you have to specify where, in what cell that we keep the student score. In this example, suppose we store the student score in the cell C59. We start the flow chart. Then we have the arrow down. When we have the arrow down already, we have input score um, in this one. Suppose we say that we have the score already in the cell C6. Uh -huh. So this value will be used to compare. Uh -huh. We write down the um, diamond shape here and put the word if in there, and then just start um, enter the logical test uh -huh. or the comparison uh -huh. condition that you want to have. 
this one you compare the value นะครับ of the students score in the cell C6 with 60 and from the problem it said that okay 60 and above that means you have to interpret that 60 and above means greater than or equals to 60 นะครับ that means 60 and above means that the most important point is the point that you say that okay whether you include 60 or not I have in this example if we say that from 60 and above means that we include 60 as well so it will be c6 greater than or equals to 60 but the problem if the problem said if the student score is greater than 60 or if um, the student score is above 60 that means we exclude 60 then in the diamond shape, it will become if C6 is greater than 60 instead. This is important because the point that is the boundary will be just like um, sometimes you might see that some people just like um, do this kind of if function wrongly because of um, the interpretation of the problem. In this case, okay, we know that okay, it's from 60 and above, then that means it is greater than or equal to 60. Then we branch out two branches from the diamond shape. You may branch right and bottom, right and left, left and bottom, up to you. But anyway, we have to branch out for two branches, one for true, the other one for false. In this one, I branch out right hand side to represent the stream of being true. If C, six is greater than or equals to 60 equals to true I have um, then on the left hand side I represent the false I branch out the false way I have and then we say that okay from the um, problem we can say that okay if it can just like um, fulfill this condition we give s that mean in case of true in here I have we give s to um, the grade we say that okay um, we display s half if true um, on the false side we display u half instead in here because we say that okay we give s or we give u in this case i want to display only then i just like put um display s or display u half after that you just like um put them together half connect them together by using the off page i'm um, sorry on page connector as a circle and then we can stop. So from this case, if you draw the flow chart already and you would like to change or convert it into Microsoft Excel, it's not difficult because the part that you have to know. Because um, the part that you have to know is that um, this one, you can see that the first part is here. You put equals to if first. For the logical test, you put it um, C6 is greater than, sorry, let me just like retype it. Put equals to if, open parenthesis. C6 is greater than or equals to 60. Right, like this. Next, value if true. It is one. Display s means that you put double quote s directly. In here means display s. Because I mean like when um, this cell is completed and if it is it becomes true, it just show the word character. Sorry, it shows the character s in the cell for you. Otherwise, we go to this one display you then you put double quote you have in here and then we close parenthesis okay so um you have to be careful in microsoft word in um what to say powerpoint if you try to type this formula in have um instead of using excel directly or you use notepad have a look on my screen if you see the double quote symbol for s this double quote is unusable in Excel. 
the um, the double quote that should happen in Excel must be just like the straight the straight um, double quote นะครับ that looks similar to what I will show you in Excel next on นะครับ okay in this one in this one you can see that we can get the formula already นะครับ for um, this um, problem you can see that when we talk about the software that I told you นะครับ um, I like to use it because it is good when whenever I have like just um, the complicated formula and I would like to use, um, I mean, like it's just like a scrap paper for me to just like draft something first. I have, for example, um, in this um, in this one, if you have a look, I have, if I put double quote, I have, okay, let me just type the formula first. Equals to if C65 equal, oh, sorry, greater than or equals to 60 comma, I have, this is the double quote that Excel accept, I have, it is double quote that is not just like um, have the hate for the um, the quote symbol here. I have in this one it is s comma u. So when we have this formula already, I have, when you would like to use this formula, you copy this one, and when you go to Excel, I have, um, my suggestion is that you just like double click on the cell. I have, and then click paste like this. So it will paste all of the functions for you. Because sometimes when somebody just like, um, don't double click, I have, double click means you are editing that cell. I have, but if you don't double click, sometimes you just paste the text. I have, it depends on what version of Excel. I have, but the safest way is that you um, double click on the cell or you click on the formula bar and paste the function in here. Have you do the same thing? Okay, right. Okay, that was the the first example that I would like to show you. I have that I would like to show you. Oh, by the way, somebody asked me that. Uh, where is the PowerPoint? I have because I haven't finished um give, giving you the all uh, of the PowerPoint thing. I have the all the slides. So that's why I just like haven't give you in the e-learning yet. But anyway, I can give it to you. I have I will just like um send it to the chat box first so that um, you can just like um, have a look on it before we just like um, get the everything for um, this PowerPoint file. Okay, it just won't be long. On um, the last class before we finish the class, I told you to just like um, find out the attendance score for Jane. I have otherwise give zero to the attendance score. Um, class cup, I just like want to see who if um if you did it already, can you please type your answer? Nakab, um not answer, I mean the formula in the chat box, please. I just want to know the formula that you did for um this basic if cup. For anyone who did example number two already, nakab, please type your answer, type your formula in the chat box cup. Okay, so right now you start like um, showing us for the for the um, formula already. I have okay. Let me just see. Okay, so um, we have like two different things, two different um, ways that you um, that you what what is what is this one um shanita i'm just wondering what does it mean by andy equals to if dot 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 in here what do you mean um i mean that oh uh, for andy score oh, for I, andy. I didn't lock the cell oh, so okay. Okay, okay. no problem okay cap. right Okay, so um, I see two different ways I have, that you solve the problem. Some of you I have, type if I have, equals to if I have, followed by open parenthesis. I have, 
B14 or B12 นะครับ or whatever cell equals to นะครับ one way somebody just like use double quote chain somebody use um, cell นะครับ the cell that you just like put the value of chain inside that one so that we can just um, specify the name of the students who get that score both of them are okay นะครับ depends on you If you say that okay, you would like to say that okay, just Jane only who will receive um, who will receive the attendance score. Okay? Then you may just like um, put the um, Jane's um, value in the if function. Okay? So in this one, you can see that we have equals to if. Okay? Logical test. Logical test. We are going to test the student name, right? Because this one we say that we want to give the score to Jane. Equals to, นะครับ double quote chain, นะครับ comma give one to her attendance means that if this person is Jane, put one. Otherwise, put zero, นะครับ In this one, you can see that it's applicable, นะครับ to all of the students that we have got, นะครับ By the way, นะครับ um you can see that somebody just put um If you say that okay, you have one person, นะครับ only that um she should get an A, and you say that this person is J like this, you may just like um compare the formula, นะครับ the if function, นะครับ B12 equals to, and then you have this cell. This is comparing one cell to another cell, นะครับ instead of comparing the cell to the value. Um, that you just like put it there. I'll just like call it. I'll tell you later on how how do we call it. Comma one, comma zero. This one, we get the similar results. You can see that here we have to lock the cell too. Okay. Oh, by the way, นะครับ Somebody asked me before that how do we gonna lock the cell? Um, in order to just like have the dollar signs in here, how 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 did I do? In order to have dollar sign straight away in front of the column name and the row number, <clears throat> quickly. So if you use if you use um, what to say, Windows, นะครับ you click the cell, นะครับ For example, I have um, I want to lock cell E11, right? I click the word E11 in the formula, and I press function key F4, นะครับ It will toggle. นะครับ different um, possible lock. Firstly, it is E11 like this, right? If I press it once, press F4 once, it locks the cell E11. If I press F4 once again, it locks, นะครับ column, um, sorry, it locks E, นะครับ and then um, row 11, นะครับ So that means we lock just the row only. Press F4 again. It locks column E, นะครับ but doesn't lock the set, um doesn't lock the row, and then we clear out the lock. นะครับ in this class we normally lock that specific cell only. นะครับ we lock cell E11 like this. If you use Mac, what should we do? Okay, let me just like see the button on Mac first. นะครับ because right now I'm opening by using Excel on Windows. นะครับ just won't be long. And by the way, นะครับ some of you ask me that when will I post the video, นะครับ um I'll post it by tomorrow, นะครับ I'll post it by tomorrow. Actually, I forgot to edit it. I just like I finish upload it during weekends because um I had um workshop during the past week, so I just like finish it last night, นะครับ That's why I haven't posted it to you. Unfortunately, sorry about that, นะครับ Okay. Um, let me see the button first. Okay, this one be long. I have. Okay, for anyone who use MacBook, I have the button that you have to press is that you have to press F N button first. F N button is on the bottom left corner. I have the F N button with the the world icon. 
นะครับ once you keep pressing you see the function key on your um, display bar นะครับ on the top one press F4 ครับ but for any of you who who have just <coughs> Who have the um, version of the MacBook that doesn't have the the touch this um the display touch bar? นะครับ You just press function key and then press F4 button. Then you should see the the um dollar sign switching. นะครับ For locking the whole uh, cell, locking just um the column number. So, sorry, column name. Locking just the row number, something like that. นะครับ Okay, right. This is the way to lock. Okay. So after that, นะครับ when we have this already, when I lock the cell already, นะครับ we get the same thing. Just like the person whose name is equals to the value in that um red cell, นะครับ cell E11, then the um attendance score will be one. Okay. okay. So you did it. Um, very good job, นะครับ for this one. Okay. Let me just copy the formula for you, for anyone who didn't do it. I have anyone who did do it. Okay. Right. So I have when we have this one already. That means we have got the um, ideas for the basic if already. Today we are going to continue talking about นะครับ other example for the if functions นะครับ okay okay so this is what I want ครับ now let me just like um talking about this um example นะครับ that I would like you to do it by yourself. This example, นะครับ in this example, he said that I would like you to give the commission rate, นะครับ using the if function, if the sales amount is more than one million bahts, otherwise we give five percent, นะครับ also, นะครับ um so for the commission rate, นะครับ you use if function in column D, and after that, นะครับ when you get the commission rate already, นะครับ I want you, นะครับ to calculate the commission amount for each person to, นะครับ the commission amount that you have to calculate in column E, นะครับ um, commission amount is the sales amount times commission rate, นะครับ sales amount times commission rate. So everyone just like um do it by yourself, นะครับ I give you five minutes. To find out commission rate and commission amount, ครับ So please do it now, นะครับ Everyone, okay, thank you. Okay then, นะครับ Times up, นะครับ Everyone. So now let's have a look, นะครับ Let's have a look. So um, in this example, นะครับ What are we going to do? Okay, right now some of you start showing the answer already, นะครับ We do similar way as we did, นะครับ With Uh, with the um, grade S and U, นะครับ That is easy. Firstly, you just like check, นะครับ The sale, sorry. We just check the sale, นะครับ That is sales amounts in. I mean, this example, I'll start checking from the um, sales amount of Andy first, นะครับ I said that okay. In this case, นะครับ Okay, I show you with the. Um, Go chat first. That would be easy. In this one, I have. Suppose I'm talking about the um, sales amount of Andy. For my one, it's in sales C19. Sales C19. Um, right now, it is hundred thousand. Okay. I just change this one. A little bit to be the value of um, what to say um, problem that I want to check. Right. Okay. In this one, now uh, we say that uh, we would like to compare for the commission 
the commission here we compare with the sales amount นะครับสี่ห so um, this one if C 19นะครับ in here it's more than 1 million บาท more than 1 million บาท means that it does not include 1 million นะครับ in here so it means that when you have to just like formulate the logical test it must be greater than 1 million if you put greater than or equals to, it will be wrong. So be careful about this one. Okay. Right. So I branch out two branches, true or false. If it's true, if it's true, I say that, okay, commission is 5%. In this one, it is not displaying, it's for calculation. When I use calculation, ten percent, sorry, ten percent. Otherwise, commission is 5%. I have like this, and then I stop. So when I would like to formulate my um, if function in here, it will be equal to if, and then I just put the um, logical test from the diamond shape here, C19 greater than 1 million, comma. Uh, be careful, this step. When you would like to assign 10% to the commission, you can see that I changed the symbol already. I don't use the, I don't use the um, double quote anymore if you have a look. And also the symbol that I use is not the pencil shape. It is the calculation here. So the way in order to put 10%, you just type 10% straight away. No double quote, นะครับ. No double quote because double quote normally we use it for text only. But this is the value that is numbers that is percentage that is currency. You don't use double quote to surround them, นะครับ. Otherwise, นะครับ. Value if false is five percent. You put it here. Or somebody may put zero point one comma zero point zero five, นะครับ. It's the same thing, นะครับ. Um, you can use a percent symbol or you can use um, the decimal point instead in here. Uh -huh. And then you just like copy this formula into your um, Microsoft Excel. Okay. So in this one, uh -huh, I'll copy this formula into uh, my Excel file. Right. So when I get the Excel file, uh -huh, it will be like this. Here. Okay, so uh, let me just like make sure that everything is correct first before I send this one to you. Uh, okay, then I copy this formula down. Somebody uh, may would like to know that how do we gonna check the process of checking your if, uh, if it is in the uh, flow chart, we call it as um, Walk through, we walk through the flow chart. So which part, which part is the um, which part if is the difficult part for, uh, which part is the difficult part or the part that is used to justify the correctness of the if function. Normally, the part that we have to check is at the boundary. The boundary in here is one million, right? Is one million because in the problem, we say that more than 1 million, then 
the um the point that you should have to just like check is that what what is the value that is less than one million equals to one million and greater than one to one million? What will be the commission rate? นะครับ So what are that those value ครับ999,999 นะครับ That is the first value that is less than one million. You have to check. Then one million. The other one is one million and one baht. นะครับ At least these three numbers you have to check. And then you can see that for Amy, she got nine 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 nine. นะครับ Pam, she got one million and one baht. And Alex got one million baht. Now let's see these three people. นะครับ If I do the things correctly, for Amy, she has to get five uh, percent. Yeah, that's correct. For Pam, she has to get ten percent because it is greater than one million. Yeah, she got ten percent. And Alex, one million. One million is not over one million. นะครับ It's equals to one million, so it is five percent only for commission rate. Yeah. So this is correct. นะครับ Okay. So now our formula is correct already. นะครับ I copy this one to you. For this formula, นะครับ When you have to calculate, sorry. When we have to calculate. The commission amount, นะครับ We can just like uh, multiply sales amount by commission rate like this. นะครับ Somebody when they have to calculate commission amount, they would like to do it easily, นะครับ Um, if you would like to just like calculate together in if, have, you can do it easily. So what does it mean? So you can see that for the formula, let me copy first. Instead of Typing 0.1 only, right? What they do is that they use a calculation inside this value three and value four straight away. So it will be 0.1 times sales amount. For value it falls, it's five percent times sales amount. I have in here, then you get the same value. I have on the commission amount that we just like calculate it outside the if function. I have so this is one guideline that you may be able to use it. I have this is the calculation inside the if function straight away. So now, what about the flow chart? What um how do we gonna adjust this in order to match with um the commission amount calculated in if? I have in here. So for this one. You can see that instead of having this, I have, um, we say that for the commission, I might put the commission amount equals to ten percent times C nineteen. While the value if false, I just change it to be commission amount equals to five percent. Um, C ninety, uh, and then you just like um, change the formula a bit. Uh, okay, so we can do like this as well. Uh, you can see that instead of just like um, showing or displaying some text, uh, um, showing or assigning a value like five percent, ten percent. For the value of true and value of false, it can be the calculation like this. นะครับ You multiply some value together like this. นะครับ Um, in order to just like have the value in that specific cell that we have got. นะครับ Okay then. นะครับ For the basic if. นะครับ Do you have any questions? กับ anyone?
So right now, I think that most of you, I think all of you can just like see this kind of the basic if and how we're going to use it easily already. So that means if you have like the easy um, comparison, you should be able to do that by using just the basic if. So now, if you don't have any questions, I would like to continue talking about another topic that is nested if. Okay. What is nested if? Nested if is the extension part for the um, for the what to say um, if function. Instead of using just um, instead of using just a logical test only, we use the extension to make your if function to perform the comparison in more complicated situations. Um, what do I mean by com more complicated situations? When you have like many decision making, when you have many decision making to match with those um, decisions, to match with those logical tests, that will give different results. For example, if you, say, you, if you say that you have multiple choice questions, if you have grades to justify, if you would like to group um, something into the groups, more than two groups, you have to use nested if to help because you can see that for the basic if that we did before, um, we can just like justify between two things only. But if you have more than more than two things, like for example, three things, and we would like to make a decision, just basic if is not enough because once you check, and if it does not match as the first time, you might still need to have a further checking. For example, in MUIC, apart from the letter grade A to F, we still have another grading system have a grading scheme, we call it as OSU grade. Or um, some of you may have seen the S and U grade in some subjects before. Actually, we have the scheme that is OSU grade. If you remember for the first example that you that we did was S um, and U. If you remember, this one was S and U. But actually, um, MUAC implemented a new grading scheme that is what we call OSU. Um, to letting the students who just like perform very well to get the O grade. That is what we call outstanding grade. Um, the grading scheme, OSU here, depends on the course. You have to see in the TKF3 or the syllabus when your lecture just like talk about the grading scheme that um, you may get, whether it's just the SNU or OSU or the regular letter grades. In this one for the OSU grade, the score ranges for each grade are, are like this. For zero to 59, that student get U. Uh, 60 to 79, get S or satisfied. And 80 uh, to 100, that student will get O grade or outstanding. Uh, so this is the OS and U. If you use, if you use just the regular basic if uh, to justify the grade at most, you can um, compare and decide between two grades only, as we did. When we have these like more than two for making a decision, more than two choices, in this case, you have to use the um, you have to use a nested if to help. The first thing you have to know is that when you have to use nested if for sure, first one, it is decision making for more than two things uh, at the same time or for more than two choices. Second one, uh, normally there are two different comparisons for the nested if. First, you would like to compare text together. Uh, for example, if you say that, okay, you have choice A, choice B, choice C, in that case, that is what that one is the um, choices that are just text. 
um, by the way นะครับ by the way if we have to use nested nested if the other one นะครับ maybe นะครับ the comparison of numbers for example in this one it is comparing the numbers นะครับ score range นะครับ they are numbers you compare the numbers for the score that the student receive to justify his or her grade so if it is the comparison of the text no problem ครับ you just compare it straight away it might be one or another but if it is the numbers นะครับ in order to eliminate your confusion นะครับ I recommend you to use the number line. I have to use the number line. What is the number line? Actually, you study from your mathematic course, mathematic courses already. I have for the number line. It's the straight line that you just like um, put the numbers that are related to each range in there. I have okay. So um, okay, let me just like talk about the number line that we have to use. Let me share my screen. I have in here. For anyone who have got um, the slide already, you can see that it's in the first slide. Okay. When we have, um, okay, let me just show you first. Number line will look like this one. Okay, let me explain to you first before we start um, preparing the number line for this example. The number line, normally, the way we do, firstly, you draw a straight line here. I have you draw a straight line here, and then you just plot the numbers that are related into this number line first. Why do I plot 60, 80, and 100? I have. Let's go back to see our problem. In this example, it said that okay. I have. We have 59, 0 to 59, 60 to 79, 80 to 100. The easy numbers that you should use should be the number that is easily um, considered, for example, 60, 80, 100. If you say that, Ajahn, can I use 59, 79, 99? Yes, up to you. Krab. But for me, I think 60, 80, um, 80 and 100 are easier krab, um, to calculate and to think about. So that's why I just like, um, plot the numbers. I just plot the number 60, 80, and 100. And um, if you ask me that, should I put zero as well? Yeah, you can just like do it. You can, do, you can also do it. I may put number zero here too. Sorry. Up if you want to, you can do it. So what to do next? The next thing you have to understand, you have to understand the symbol that we have to use. If you include any numbers in that range, you use the dark circle. If you want to exclude that number in the range, you use white circle. So the way that we do is that you have to draw each, lane, each range of value that you would like to justify in the nested if as a straight line and terminate that line on each side with the circle. Either it is um, dark circle or white circle here. In here, so for zero, you may just like put it like the arrow head like this, or you may just like want to um, include the zero in here, you may just use a dark circle that is the same thing, I have no problem. But for other numbers, I have, you have to put either dark or white circle in here. So what are we going to do next? The next thing, I have, you consider each range I have, at a time. You consider each range at a time. So in this one, I have, the first range is for the person who get, um, what to say, 
will get U grade. U grade, you can see that in the Excel, we say that zero to 59, right? Zero to 59. So you draw the straight line between zero and 59, uh -huh. and terminate with the circle, uh -huh. for zero to 59. By the way, we don't have 59 here. Uh -huh. We have just 60 that I just plotted in the, in the number line. Then 59 is not 60. That means if you want to draw a straight line from zero to 59, you have to put the white circle at 60 because this range does not include 60. And then you just like put U on top of this line so that you know that this is the line for you. Next, for 60 to 80, for 60 to 80, you can see that, okay, before I just like talk about 60 to 80, if you just like consider, if you consider in your Excel file, we say that the S grade is from 60 to 79. Once again, we don't have C, um, we don't have 80, including in this grade, in the S grade. So that means, and also in this number line, we don't have number 79, right? We have just 80. So you can draw the circle at 80, but it's a white circle because you exclude 80. Now, for the S grade, we start from 60 to 79, right? When we have 60, include in this range, then circle at 60, and then you have dark circle have at 60. For, oh, sorry. For the, um, for the 80, we exclude it. We use white circle, and then we draw the straight line. We type S on top of this line. Next on the last um, grade, the last grade is O. O is from 80 and above. From 80 and above means that we include 80 as well. So it will be dark circle at 80. And then we can have up to 100. Then you may just like put the dark circle at 100 as well. Depends. Or you can just like leave it as the um, arrowhead like this because in some subjects I have I give the score to the student and I have some extra points as well so um, the total score for the student might be like more than 100 points I have he may he or she may get like 102 101.5 something like that so I just leave it like that okay so when we have this already I have we will use this number line to prepare our flow chart how do we gonna do that? The way in order to use the number line to prepare the flow chart, um, we consider one range at a time. So I'll start from U grade first. When I just like um, complete the U grade checking already, um, the next thing is that I just do the, um, I just do the, what to say, the S grade. And after that, I do the um, O grade later I have until I finish. Now let's see, I have, let's see. The next one is that, okay, when we have this range, okay, let me clear out this one first. Okay. You can see that in here, I have, I will just like start from the first part. I have that is U grade first. I have so how do we gonna start? Okay, sorry, I forget to tell you about this. You choose the direction. I have you may start from U grade, then compare S grade, then compare O grade. Or somebody said, can I start from the maximum grade first? I start from O. And then I can um, I go for checking for grade S or grade U. Either direction is okay. But the checking that is not okay is you just randomly do it without any system. For example, you do the S grade first and then you go to U grade and then you jump to O grade. This one is not okay because everything must be done in serial. So in this one, how do we gonna do? Firstly, firstly, 
the way that you have to do let's assume that I put the score in cell B45 นะครับ in cell B45 I will just compare this um, score with the grade นะครับ that are possible firstly นะครับ um, I will start from the U grade first นะครับ that is less than 60 okay this grade you can see that is less than 60 นะครับ for the U grade um, In this one, I just put the diamond shape. I put if B45 is less than 60, นะครับ Why less than 60? Because from the number line here, นะครับ U grade does not include 60, นะครับ In its consideration, so that's why this one is if B45 is less than 60, นะครับ Value if true. Grade is U, นะครับ for sure. No more checking because you know that if it goes to this direction, นะครับ if it s go to this direction for sure, less than 60, that person has to get U grade for sure. Next, นะครับ if it's not less than 60, see in the number line, ครับ if the score is not less than 60, not less than 60 means that it might be possible. To decide, นะครับ any score that is not less than 60 is greater than or equal to 60, right? So in this case, you can see that we cannot finalize which grade that the student should get because we still have two grades, นะครับ that are possible either S or O. Then you have to check first whether it's S or not. After that, if you check and it's not S. You give O to that person. <laughs> In this one, okay. Let's see. Let's see. You check with the S grade first. For S grade, for S grade here, you don't need to check for the lower bound, because the lower bound was checked in the U grade already. Then you just check the upper bound of S grade. Upper bound of S grade is that if S is less than 80, if um, B45 is less than 80, why is that? Cup? Because in here, S grade does not include 80. You can see that it's up to 79 only, right? And if you say that, okay, what about that student get just 50? Will that person get S or not? The answer is no, นะครับ If that person get 50 from the first checking, that person get S already, and then we finish. But this one, we have to pass this one already. That means the score is not less than 60, but it is less than 80, นะครับ So that means it's between, นะครับ61. Sorry, it's between 60 to 79, นะครับ That person. So we have like two possible ways, true or false. นะครับ If true, that person get S. Okay. If false, actually, นะครับ If you want to continue checking with 100, นะครับ If that grade is less than 100, you can get O. Otherwise, you get um you say that grade is error, นะครับ But somebody said that okay, Ajahn, you give the extra point so that means somebody get more than 100. You then um, you can just like skip this part, นะครับ You can skip this part. You don't need to check this. You can bypass it and say that student get grade O straight away, นะครับ Like this depends on you, นะครับ You can just put here. Okay, but in this one. If you want to check, นะครับ and you say that okay, you want, นะครับ to check whether grade, uh, whether the score must not be greater than 100, then you have to check this. After that, when you finish all the conditions, นะครับ we get like three possible grades, นะครับ in the checking already, then we can finish, นะครับ in order to finish the flow chart, นะครับ because actually every single Um, box like this, like like this playing like this, must not be, นะครับ ended like this. You have to connect them together and ended and ended with the stop button, 
นะครับ in here I just link them together in the on page connector and then I can just like stop นะครับ so this is the flow chart for nested if oh why do we call it as nested nested if you can see that because it is if and if and if like a nest นะครับ you weave the if together นะครับ in the same problem here นะครับ in this case that's why considering from the flow chart shape it looks like nest นะครับ that you just like link many if together like this that's why we call it as nested if นะครับ and from this one we will use this flow chart นะครับ to convert I'm sorry to transform this flow chart to become your um, to become your if function นะครับ to become your if function what are we going to do in order to have sorry in order to have the if function in here นะครับ okay let me just like um, show you in here นะครับ okay um, I will type it in my text edit program okay so I start from นะครับ input score suppose I have the score in B45 already นะครับ I put equal to if นะครับ the first one I start B45 is less than 60นะครับ Okay, this is the first checking, right? Value if true. I display you grade. Okay, นะครับ comma because this one otherwise it will be stop. Okay, comma value if false. Value if false, นะครับ I have another if. I put if again. Open parenthesis. B forty five is less than eighty. นะครับ comma value if true. นะครับ double quote s because the grade is s. After that, not nothing more. นะครับ okay. For value if false, you have the third if. Uh, value if false you put comma if again because we have to check the third time if b45 is less than or equals to 100 if it's true great is o if it's false it's error okay so this is the function that we have got Now is the time to close the parenthesis. So we close the innermost first. After that, you close the second one and the outermost parenthesis. This is the nested if. You check the first condition. If it true, you do something. If it's false, you um, continue checking. When you continue checking, in the second checking, if it's true, you do something. If it's false, you continue checking. The third if, if it's true, you do something. If it's false, you show another thing. And then you close all the related parentheses in here. Okay. So in this one, everyone, you have to be careful a bit in the text edit in the current version of Mac OS. It just changed the symbol of double quotes. So when you just like copy and paste into Excel, you have to be careful. That symbol of the double quotes here. Um, you have to change, you have to retype double quote in Excel once again. I'll show you นะครับ if I copy this one and I paste directly into Excel what will happen Okay let me just like send it to you in the chat box นะครับ Okay so in this one now let's see นะครับ 
I go to my Excel and copy the value that I get นะครับ from the chat box in here what would I like you to see นะครับ okay suppose we have the score of the student like this okay so now นะครับ <coughs> from the formula that I um, send it to you in the chat box if you don't do anything นะครับ you just paste like this it shows the error to you immediately right the reason is because as I told you นะครับ the double quote symbol is not correct one the way that we have to do นะครับ Normally, when you get the um, the function over there that you copy from um, the software like TextEdit already, you double click the cell. I have paste that formula. Sorry, paste that formula, and then you just like go to the double quote symbol, change it to be the correct one. I have. Sorry, I have to just like change at the error to here. Uh -huh. Okay, the correct one. Um, if you see in the chat box, you see that I send it again. Uh -huh. um, it must be the straight double quote symbol. Uh -huh. Okay, when you get this one already, uh -huh, let's see whether it will be correct or not. In this one, uh -huh. I copy the formula. To the grades for all the students. Oh, by the way, I have to change the cell as well. It's not B forty five. My one is um, C thirty six. C thirty six. You have to change the cell accordingly. Right. Okay. So um, I get the score for 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 these four students already. Nah. Now, what do we have to do? As I told you, nah. The the most important point, nah. That you have to check is the point at the boundary. You can see that the boundary of the grade here is like um fifty nine, seventy nine. And also more on um, the value that is more than more than 100. Okay, we just like check those. Have, and if you want to check more, for example, if you want to check 59, 60, 79, 80, 100, and the value more than 100, have, feel free to do so. I show you in the flow chart have, when I do the um, walk through to the flow chart for Jim, Andy, Judy, and Anne, what will happen? Have, okay. So now let's see. I have I show you in the flow chart once again. I check for Jim first. Walk through or run through the same thing. I have Jim fifty nine. Um, Amy seventy nine. Judy, Etty, and N, one o three. Okay, now I'll check. I'll check the um, score, the grade for Jim first. In my Excel, it shows you. I have. Now let's see. The way to run through is that when we have 59, right? When we have 59 here, I come, I go to put 59 in here. You can see that 59 is less than 60, right? 59 is less than 60, it's true. Then the grade is U. So that's why Jim's grade is U, that is correct one. I have we get you for gym grade. Next, we have 
we check for the second person. That is Amy. Amy gets 79, right? For 79. 79 is 79 less than 60? No. It goes to false. Is 79 less than 80? Yes. I have it's true. Then the second person or Amy is great must be S. And if you check in, um, if you check in our Excel, Amy got an S. Yeah, that is correct one. Now, let's see the third person. The third person is Judy. Judy get 80. Uh -huh. Judy get 80. You get 80. 80 compared with 60. Is 80 less than 60? No, you go to false side. Is 80 less than 80? Uh -huh. No. 80 equals to 80 uh -huh. is not less than 80. Then you go to false side. Is 80 less than or equals to 100? Um, oh, sorry. Is 80 less than or equals to 100? Yes, 80 is less than 100. Let's go to true side. Then Judy should get O. And in our Excel, Judy grade is O. That is correct. And the last one, the last one, and who get 103. When we walk through and grade, it will be like this. And got 103. Is 103 less than 60? No. It goes to another checking. Is 103 less than 80? No. It's false. It goes to another checking. Is 103 less than or equals to 100? No, it's greater than 100. So it shows error instead. So and 103, she got the error. Uh -huh. That is the correct one. Uh -huh. So this is the walkthrough for the nested if that you prepare in the flowchart. Uh -huh. Somebody said, um, can we just like do the walkthrough in our if formula? Yes, Cap. Sometimes if you don't prepare the um, function in terms of the flow chart, uh -huh, but you just like um, type it straight away in your um, Excel or in your text edit, it works like this, uh -huh, everyone. Okay, let me show you. So in this one, I have in this one, we check Jim 59, right? So firstly, we check 59 with less than, is less than 60 or not? Yes, it's true. So it must be you. It must be you. Then it's correct. Jim score is you. That is correct one. Next, I have we check for Amy score. For Amy score, it is 79, right? Firstly, you check 79 with 60. Is it less than 60? No, it goes to another if. Is 79 less than 80? Yes, then the score of the second person or Amy is S. Yeah, that is correct. Next, we check for the next person. For the next person score, Judy score. She got 80. We compare 80 with 60. 80 is not less than 60. You go to this part. Is 80 less than 80? No, you go to this part. Is 80 less than or equals to I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. For 80, okay, let me do again. 80, is 80 less than 60? No. You go to this part. Is 80, 
less than or equals to 80 or not นะครับ uh, no ครับ so in this one นะครับ when when um, when 80 is not less than 80นะครับ you have to check the last part the last part you check 80 with 100 80 is not less than sorry it, let 80 when you compare with 80 less than or equals to 100 80 is less than 100 yeah that's correct so you show all grade for judy นะครับ in this excel it's correct one now let's solve about the last person that is Anne. and get 103 นะครับ and get 103 for 103 you can see that 103 compared with 60 is not less than 60 then you go to this part is 103 less than 80 no you go to the last part is 103 is less than or equal to 100 no you show the false part here that is error that's why and get the error once นะครับ so this is the way in order to do the uh, walk through นะครับ or run through to our flow chart or to our formula somebody is just say that okay i don't want to waste my time to draw my flow to draw a flow chart if you're fluent enough in order to do this um, e function in um, excel directly นะครับ no problem you can just like um, write it down นะครับ as a formula like this and then you start checking by using the uh, walkthrough like this as well by just simulating some numbers and then assume some number first and then just test and the point that is most the most important part to test is at the border of each um of each decision or each of each value for it for example this one is for the grade นะครับ is for the grade that you have to check okay right okay then นะครับ up to this point do you have any questions ครับ anyone All right. So if you don't have any questions, นะครับ If you don't have any questions, um, I would like you to see this example, นะครับ And then I would like you to just like um, prepare the what to say, prepare the if function, นะครับ For this one. Okay. Let me just like show you this example. Oh, so in this company, นะครับ In this company. Let me just like um, explain this example to you. I have in this company, I have you have the information of the employee, I have the salesperson, I have of the salesperson, um, and then we have like um, sales amount and years of work. This company consider the bonus rate according to number of years that the sales employ um, that the salesperson work with them. I have in this table. So if that person works less than one year, that person get 3% bonus rate. If he or she works one to five years, he or she will receive 5% bonus rate. And if he or she works more than 7%, he or she gets 7% of the bonus rate. The things I want you to do is that I want you to calculate the bonus rate for that person for our sales representative. นะครับ and then find the bonus amount for them นะครับ find the bonus amount for them on this coming Wednesday I will just like um let you just like um give me the formula นะครับ for calculating the bonus rate of each person นะครับ in the in this company นะครับ okay so for the um for the information of this example นะครับ I think I just like send it to you in the chat box already so um, please copy it into your Excel นะครับ like we have got in the table like this so that you can just calculate it นะครับ and we'll continue the if on the next class นะครับ okay for this example do you have any questions ครับ anyone 